Hi, welcome to Science Land. I'm Nikita, and today we are going to talk about methods for detection of GMO in food and feed. But before starting the video, I request you to subscribe to my channel. It really motivates me to make more content for you. So let's start today's topic. Okay, so basically we are talking about the genetically modified organism, particularly in food and how can you detect it. So this video would be more of an introduction and the upcoming videos will be, uh, you know, the actual methods for detecting a GMO in food. Fine. GMO, how do you define GMO? anything or any organism which is genetically modified it is known as gmo now gmo is like uh, such a concept that if a gene is modified in a plant it is genetically modified plant or genetically modified microorganism so these are the examples fine now why are we talking with respect to only food because you know the industry of gmo is so huge that mostly it is related to agriculture and agro industries and uh, obviously because food is in demand and when it is a genetically modified organism we are not intaking a microorganism directly so we are talking about gmos in food okay flavor savor tomato now this is the first commercially grown genetically modified plant uh, this particular tomato delays ripening so what happens the tomato would last longer now whether there should be any genetic modification in food that's a you know kind of a controversial topic why because there are so many aspects there is the environmental risk which is involved ethical concern food safety apart from these three there are like political aspects social aspects even scientific aspects so the entire topic is very contentious whether the gmo should be there in food and feed or no okay now talking about gm plants the major gm crops which are grown are canola cotton maize and soya bean Fine. Now, since we are talking about GMO, whenever the release of GMO is done, that needs to be regulated. Okay. So, there is this protocol which is known as Cartagena Protocol. I have made a video about it a long time ago. You can check the video if you are interested. It regulates the release of GMO for experimental purpose and for commercial purpose. So, let's say i am an industry of bt cotton but how much bt cotton is to be released in the environment that particular thing is regulated by the laws and regulations of this protocol okay now how are we going to identify if our food is genetically modified or no so there are certain labeling standards now what are labeling standards if content of any genetically modified ingredient is more than 0.9 percent of the food then gm genetically modified term is given to that particular food which is the labeling standard okay so if my potato chips here are genetically modified even with respect to a particular gene in potato or anything else the ingredients would be specifying that okay the potato is genetically modified gm would be labeled there okay if it is less than 0.9 percent then it is considered to be an accidental or technically unavoidable situation and the label of gm is not given to that particular product okay so this value 0.9 percent is very important now because we know that genetically modified ingredient is actually a contaminant it's a foreign substance or a particle right so how would you detect it because if usually when people eat a gmo let's say flavor saver tomato they have these 
side effects like rashes on the skin or there might be small minute blisters or at times itching as well so how are we going to detect whether our food has this particular genetically modified ingredient or no okay so basically there are two ways or methods you identify the genetically modified dna or you identify the genetically modified protein either of the two and then you can conclude if that particular food product or food stuff is gmo or no so this is the introduction so that's it for today's video thank you so much for watching bye bye